Okay. So uh, I mentioned the name of Noel Matov, whom you've seen. Uh, she's a photographer. She also uh, is of a great support for the to curate the exhibitions. I couldn't. We couldn't. I couldn't do that without her help. And um, so it's now a gallery of twenty portraits. And these 20 portraits have traveled not only throughout Europe, but all around the world. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about this story. So it started, I had to look back <laughs> into my own emails. In 2013, I got an email one evening by, from Sharu Goel, I didn't know her, who was then based in Constance. And uh, she asked me uh, to give a talk on women in maths in, in a platform. They, had a, they were very active um, in supporting women in Constance. And so I was about, you know, I was tired, it was the evening. I was about to say, I'm sorry, but I'm not, I happen to be a woman. I happen to do maths, but I've got nothing to, do, to say about women in maths. It's not my job. I'm neither a sociologist nor an anthropologist. And then I thought, well, maybe I could, all I can do is as a subject doing maths and being a woman, I can just say what I see from my perspective about women in mass. And then I was thinking, I'll just write to some of the women. I find women in mass quite remarkable. <clears throat> the ones I've met around the world, because it's tough to become a woman in mass. So you have to um, have to have overcome some obstacles. So you, you do uh, meet uh, some remarkable personalities. So I just wrote to some of them that evening, email enables you to do that uh, without further ado. So I wrote to this list of people I had met in the past, I had uh, liked to meet, I was pleased to have met, and uh, picking out different places in the world. So uh, Nagoya, Beijing, Kiev, Gra Graz in uh, Austria, Novi Sad, Serbia, uh, Bogota, Colombia, Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso, Perth, Australia, uh, Mumbai, in India, etc. And they all said yes. And so I was very pleased. Uh, they would answer my questions. So my idea was, okay, I'll just ask them why, how they started to do maths, why they, whether they enjoyed doing maths, whether they regretted doing maths, or whether they were happy to have made this choice. And would they send me a little photograph? And with that, I made a little, very modest catalog handmade. And uh, that was the cover of the catalog, this little map. And then um, I thought, oh, I've asked them for a lot. It was a lot, I thought. You know, they, they, it was maybe two pages interview, online interview. They answered my questions. And I thought, this is a little treasure. I shouldn't just leave it to that. And so I went up to Agnes Handwerk, who's a filmmaker, who's uh, made films, for example, about uh, Yuri Manin. And um, I asked her whether she would like the idea of, you know, or have any idea of how to turn this into a film with these people. And of course, it's a little, unrealistic to go to Mumbai, Perth, Wagadugu, et cetera, to film all these uh, women. So she was much more down to earth and said, well, why don't you do an exhibition and maybe <laughs> first start with Europe? So I thought, wow, okay. And so she said, well, you just have to find a photographer. It so happened that I'd met a photogra photographer in Berlin, Noel, and I thought secretly, <laughs> I hope she'll say no, because I don't see <laughs> <laughs> uh, setting up a huge exhibition <laughs> with, with uh, you know, it sounded like a big project. You know, I thought Agnes would do the film and I would just help a bit, but then it became, I was there with this a huge project. And Noelle said, yes, I really didn't expect her to say yes, but she said yes. 
I was both happy and thought, oh dear, now, now I have to do something serious. And I went to um, Sarah Atzani, who's maybe among uh, the in the audience today and uh, she was working with me at the time and I said would you like to help me she said yes luckily uh, and she was in Potsdam and then uh, later Magdalena Georgescu also joined in and we contacted some of the names you'll see were already there before Karin Bauer was in the first catalog uh, who else uh, Jushanka was there um, a few, maybe not that many. And then um, we uh, looked around and we wanted a very broad spectrum, as broad as can be. And 13 is the number Noel, who's got nothing to do with maths, who used not to have anything to do with maths. Now she has a lot to do with maths. But she chose 13. She thought it sounded very mathematical. So we kept to 13. And then we chose women, um, some well-known, better known, some not so uh, well-known in different topics, in different parts of, the, the, of Europe, of different generations. We wanted a broad uh, spectrum. Why? Because we wanted everybody to be able to identify. And what Marjetta said uh, earlier on, she felt moved, I think, because she could maybe relate to some of the biographies she read. And had they only been big shots, as you call them, maybe it's more difficult to relate uh, to someone you think you'll never become. And so um, I, we thought that was uh, very important. Uh, then we started the portraits. And that was in Cortona in Italy, a beautiful palace uh, for the 17th European Women in Math General Meeting. Uh, there, um, Margarita, we don't see it with my, maybe Margarita Mendes Lopez, uh, who might be here today, uh, was one of the people who kindly came to the meeting and we took this opportunity to interview her. So every time uh, we had an interview accompanied by a little uh, kind of crash course before that in the topic of research of the protagonist, because I, we thought it was very important that the uh, portrait women were got involved with their maths before we took pictures or Noel took pictures of them and I interviewed them. So um, I listened to lots of maths and Noel too, <laughs> because she was taking the photographs. And uh, so that was a little talk. She was a private crash course she was giving me on her topics. Then in 2016, uh, I'm cutting a long story short because you might imagine that we needed money for that. And so that was not easy. It took us some time. Uh, and here are, I think, most of the protagonists um, at the seventh European Congress of Mass. So it's, uh, that's why we're very proud to be here virtually today at this next one, eighth, because this, the seventh one in Berlin, that was the Mathematical Library uh, of the Technical University in Berlin, where it, it took place. Um, that was uh, the previous Congress. And you might recognize some of the uh, protagonists of the catalog, for those of you who've seen the exhibition. Uh, this was thanks to Jan Erdnus, who's the uh, librarian of this uh, Mathematical uh, Mathematics Library of the Technical University in Berlin. Uh, we had found it very difficult to find, uh, to be hosted anywhere. We didn't have much money, so we couldn't afford, you know, to um, rent a, a, a space in the, of an official exhibition space at the uh, ECM. But uh, Jan Erdnus kindly opened his library to us, which is a beautiful library. So that's where it took place. We had some support. Uh, we were very encouraged by the Alexander von Humboldt 
uh, Foundation, who gave us, who even supported us before we started with a prize, which was a networking prize. And there I should mention uh, Sasha Antoniuk, who uh, from Ukraine, who had this idea of applying and who, with whom we applied for, for this support. Uh, and they were right. Uh, most of our activities are about networking. And this exhibition, as Margita was saying in her introductory words, is helps to get to uh, female and also male mathematicians by uh, showing the exhibition. Then uh, the Robert Bosch uh, Foundation, my Kenya, uh, TU Berlin, as I mentioned, I'm from the University of Potsdam, so they participated uh, also, and of course, European Women in Mass, for example, they supported uh, some of us when we were in Cortona. I'm not giving the whole list, then uh, in different venues, there were also local supports. And then um, that's, uh, I'm going to tell you about the 30, so that's how we got to the first 13 portrait mathematicians. It took us some time. And um, so the, these are them. Uh, these are uh, the panels of, uh, wait a minute. Yes, I think these are panels or the photographs. Noel can correct me, uh, that uh, have, um, are, uh, which the panels are based. You'll see their names, or have I already given them? No, maybe I didn't. Uh, did I give them, give the names? Yes, yeah, so here they are. So here are the names and you see from different uh, places in Europe. And, and then the, uh, from Berlin, the exhibition traveled to many places. First, starting in Bonn, not too far, Potsdam, Bonn, then Italy, France, it went round France, and then it became out of control somehow. The, the, the panels are available as PDF files. And so uh, we've lost track uh, in some way of where they are. And sometimes we uh, hear about an exhibition that has taken place with the panels and we had not been aware of it. Here, are some of the 120 odd places. And you'll see there are interesting places. Well, all places are interesting, but Abu Dhabi, uh, that, took, that took some work to get uh, everything to Abu Dhabi. The ones in red are mentioned, Barcelona, Spain, uh, Beirut, uh, Lebanon, Bogota, Colombia, Turkey, the Yar in Turkey, uh, Gothenburg in, in Sweden, um, and let me start with Barcelona. So uh, this is a beautiful building. This was March 2019 when it was still possible to travel. And uh, as you see, according to the place, the uh, panels are printed in different ways. So this is how they chose to do it here. Whereas here in Bogota, uh, in fact, I, I helped put them in those frames. They had these frames somewhere in some corner. We got them out, we, know, we cleaned them and put uh, the uh, posters in those frames. And for those posters, you see there was no money. Uh, we had to collect money from colleagues. Uh, so that's one advantage of this exhibition. With very little money you manage, I think it costs us uh, maybe 100 euros to get all that here. This is in Beirut, and I, I like this picture because uh, these veiled ladies are looking at, watching uh, these unveiled uh, uh, female mathematicians. Uh, we were there. Uh, I should say that um, a colleague of mine, Georges Habib, uh, from the university, Lebanese University in Beirut, helped us uh, put this up and there again we had to buy some nails, missing nails, and Beirut it's not easy, it's even worse nowadays, but 
it's not always easy. So every time it's there's little stories that go with it. And maybe a story here to mention other uh, male colleagues who've uh, helped us. So George Habib uh, and um, also Paolo Askiri, uh, who happened to be, this was a meeting I was co-organizing in Beirut. And Paolo, who's Italian, came up to me. I didn't know him, hardly knew him at the end and said very shyly, do you mind if I take the exhibition with me? This exhibition was a portable one. Now we've lost it. We don't know where it is, but I, I brought it with me. I don't remember how many kilos, eight kilos, I think it weighed. And I brought it with me on the plane. And uh, Paolo said, do you mind if I take it on with me uh, onto the next meeting? I think it was Belgrade. I said, oh, I'm, I was very pleased because I didn't have to carry back the eight kilos. And uh, he took it. And then from there, it traveled back to Italy, even to his son's high school. So those are lots of uh, stories that go with it. Havana, Cuba, Cuba, uh, Mbur, Senegal, Quito, Ecuador. So various places. So Gothenburg, there we got the support, you'll see his name later on, of, um, oh, his first name, I've just forgotten, it'll come back. Uh, Rina is his last name, Professor Rina. No, it's Ka Ka Kodia. 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 Norway, Sylvie, okay. Norway, not Sweden. Oh, no, sorry, I'm mixing up. This is the other one. Yes, you're right, thank you for correcting. This is yet we're not yet in Norway we're coming there later so this we had the support of another the male colleague there that's why I'm mixing up and uh, so University of uh, Gothenburg um, uh, where this uh, exhibition was shown Havana the University of Havana is very similar uh, in ar architecturally to the one in Barcelona that we saw early on and this was on the balconies and you see, it took us ages to find this string. Where we could hang the, uh, the uh, posters uh, because in Havana, it's very difficult uh, to find any, uh, well, material goods. And so we were very proud and it, it looked beautiful. Uh, so this is in Turkey. I wasn't there myself. Uh, so, um, you see, it's this exhibition has its own life, and uh, in Paris, uh, in in the suburbs of Paris, so uh, in the north of Paris, in a rather deprived suburbs of Paris, there's a, a group of people um, who uh, do a lot of outreach. So they have they are they. Um, try to set up plays and projects with school children from that area and uh, often based on scientific background. And somehow they reached out to us and asked us whether they could make their own exhibition kind of thing. And you see, notre point de vue, our point of view, and those are, I think, 15-year-olds from Iqbal Masi School in Saint-Denis. And they sent us questions for, for us to send on to the portrait women. And so you see Catherine answered, Nandini answered, some answered. And the questions uh, were first in very bad English and also strange, like um, how many theorems do you prove a day? or um, uh, you bored doing maths, or, but nice questions. And, uh, and Catherine, Nalini, and others did answer. And uh, they put up, uh, they set up their own poster. So that was very nice. Here is in Senegal, Bur. there was a school, Ames School, and I happened to be there. And I had arranged for the exhibition to reach the school in time. Unfortunately, it arrived after I left, but 
I therefore asked some male colleagues to take over, which was maybe all the best. But before I left, before the exhibition actually arrived, and you see here again, we just did what we could to hang it up. Um, I organized a little debate with a very few women who were there and many men, uh, some of them are here. And the women were very shy. There were maybe three, four young women and they were very shy. And I said, don't hesitate to you know, just stand up and talk. And say, oh no, I don't think so. But when the men started saying some of, I think they were from the Ivory Coast, Oh, my vision of women, I have a little hut in the middle and all my women are in different huts around me and they shouldn't go uh, to university, not even to school. I want to dominate them uh, knowledge wise. And so that made all the three or four young women stand up and they started arguing and it became very lively. Uh, these men uh, trying to convince them that that was their ideal woman uh, certainly not a mathematician as they were uh, wanting to become. That was Quito um, in Ecuador uh, in the entrance hall, very nicely, uh, very nicely presented. So I think it was a, a South America, a Latin American algebra conference I happened to be at. Then. Uh, once you start interviewing people and taking photographs, you don't stop <laughs> because you, you get more and more curious. Uh, it's fascinating to listen to uh, all these women tell you how they got to maths. And so we thought we've left out some countries uh, like uh, Spain had been left out, Greece, Turkey, uh, Slovenia, Croatia, Montenegro. So we thought, let's try to include them. And so we met in Genf, in Geneva, sorry, in Geneva for a math, a women at the intersection of uh, mathematics and high energy physics, a meeting we've been organizing with some colleagues. I work in mathematical physics for some years. And uh, so you'll see some physics, physicists here also. And we took this opportunity to interview and portray uh, a couple of uh, women. And then, uh, thanks to Margetta, Neja, uh, we had a meeting in a very nice place, Bled, um, in Slovenia. And uh, so there were, we went from one lake to the other, and there we made another series of interviews and uh, Noel made took some pictures, but then there was one more. Uh, Ragni Kene from Norway, so this time I got to get it right, and Cordian Rina, or Rina, who I think he's German, so Cordian Rina. Um, and you see them there with Karin Bauer, who's also in the exhibition. And uh, so we've now got seven, six plus one. And this gave rise to 20 portraits. So these are the seven new ones, the 13 original ones. And here at the back of the catalog, you've got pictures. And I recommend that you read about their life and professional parts intertwine in a very interesting way. Now, once you've been around Europe, you want to go a little further, look out a little further. And it was not only we did that, but other people took this initiative. So Mariel Saez uh, from uh, Chile uh, contacted us saying she wanted to also uh, have interviews and uh, portraits made, portraits made of colleagues, uh, women she knew in South America. And this gave rise to an exhibition and two books, in fact, this one and another one. Also, yeah, lots of things happened around these portraits. So this is thanks to Marie. And um, then uh, Eddie Parigua, uh, who's based in Bogota, uh, Pontifica, Pontificia Universidad Javeriana in Bogotá. 
she took the initiative. I think she was maybe also helped by uh, Carolina Neda Jimenez um, to interview, uh, so 23, they were ambitious, uh, Colombian women. Uh, Colombia is a big country, a very a diverse country, and they went out, they interviewed women from different parts. Um, and it's a very, uh, what strikes me in that uh, exhibition is they're all smiling and look so joyful. Uh, so Pierre Portal, some, I was telling you, some men supported us, and Pierre is one of the ones who supported us. Uh, asked me, oh, I don't know how it came up. I, I, I was invited there to talk about women again or something like that, I don't remember, uh, in Canberra. And then came up the idea, well, why not do an ex, you know, interview women there? And I started interviewing uh, women in uh, Canberra. I don't remember, six, I think. And then we went uh, to Melbourne. Uh, well, I went, oh yeah, Pierre was also there at some point. Uh, Melbourne, Sydney. So these are, there are uh, 16 from these different places. And it was, again, another outlook. And uh, these stories make me think, some of these stories are very moving, very striking. As you can see, there are some young women from different parts of the world because uh, Australia is a, a, a land of immigration, and some of them have had very harsh stories. And you could think there could start; it could it could be a Me Too in mass. That's what my feeling was after interviewing them. And so here we are now at the eighth uh, European Congress in Maths in Porto Rosh, and I would like to thank uh, institutions and organizations that have supported us. Uh, I mentioned the ECM, of course, the University of Primorska, who are hosting us, but also the Society of Mathematicians, Physicists, and Astronomers of so Slovenia, who helped also with the meeting where we had some interviews and uh, photographs made, faculty of uh, mathematics and physics uh, at the University of Ljubljana, the Institute for Maths, and uh, some insurance companies. And last but not least, let me uh, thank the main protagonists today, uh, whom I named at the beginning, and uh, I really appreciate your support, and I think so does Noel. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Sylvie. Very nice. <laughs> it's always nice to hear what we did and uh, how much we did. <laughs> and thank you also, uh, Marietta and Jasna, for supporting us and, and showing our exhibition. It was a lot of work we all had together, which was much fun. It was really, we mailed and uh, talked and, and sent back and forth for months. I mean, since last year, at least, or so. no, even before, because as we were in Slovenia the year before, we started sort of planning. And then because of the virus, we weren't able to do it last year. So it was pro uh, proposed to this year. So, but all together, uh, as Sylvie mentioned, um, for me, it was sort of the first time to have contact with mathematicians altogether. That was 19, uh, sorry, excuse me, 2015, as I met Sylvie for the first time. And it is a big, it was always a big sort of um, pleasure for me to, well, to listen to the interviews or taking the interviews together with Sylvie because I never met any profession before where well, in this case, women were so happy with the work they are doing, which in my experience, I had experienced that before, but actually only with my sister who's a midwife. She's the one who is sort of like these mathematicians very, well, when she comes back from birth, she's of, of course, every time it's like being misguided a bit in a way. And, but these mathematicians on the blackboards, because we always had the same settings, 
Sylvie, the, the, the mathematician explained her math to Sylvie and I took pictures while, while she, they were doing this or talking about it. And every time the mathematician sort of started smiling and, and were just sort of, well, into their profession. And that was a very, it was nice to see how happy a profession can make persons, which is also does it with myself, but it's different in a way because I, I don't get that involved or only seldom like I realized that, that mathematicians were able to do that. So it was, a, was and is a big sort of pleasure for me to do this work. And, uh, and I really do hope that we're going to get on maybe next year to Japan to go on and uh, even expand the exhibition for worldwide mathematicians. That would be a big, um, that would be really great if we would manage to do that. So, okay. So that's what I would like to say. And thank you. Thank you very much. You that are here today. Thank you, Noel. And let me add to this, if you're curious about the analogies between uh, the mathematician and the midwife, you can uh, have a look at the catalog and you'll see an interview with Noel's sister, as a, who is a midwife, and you'll see there are lots of analogies, also with the composer. So um, now I'd like to um, ask uh, the protagonist of the exhibition who kindly accepted to be with us uh, this evening or today, or depending on where you are in the world, uh, to say a few words. So I'll start just in alphabetical order of the first name with Bitty. Would you like to say a few words? Thank you, Sylvia. <laughs> so first of all, I, I really think I have to thank uh, Sylvia and Noel. <laughs> because uh, the catalog part for me was uh, just so much such so smooth and such a pleasure we were in slovenia <laughs> and uh, there was the bled uh, conference you talked about and sylvie just came and i think we knew each other a little bit from the european women in math before so she just said you know i'm doing and in her smooth way she said i said you know I, I, and I answered in my way saying, well, I don't, the, the way she reacted first when she was told, I reacted the same way. And then she said, you know, there is a primary school over here and it's closed. Why don't you tell us what you do, what you did and so on. So it, it was so fluid that uh, I felt very comfortable, but uh, I always feel a little embarrassed in such situations. I mean, it's like, there are so many good women mathematicians around the world and why me type of <laughs> standard feelings. Uh, but then uh, I really uh, thank you. It's, uh, and I see the, the kind of impact it has. Uh, actually, to answer your question, I mean, I cannot answer your question about visibility, but uh, I mean, the, the kind of work we do in mathematics is not, uh, uh, you know, enormous, it's not striking. You know, we do we do little work and we do it together. I mean, it's always like a common work that advances in its way. It has a very special rhythm uh, in throughout history. I think so. The the, the mathematical rhythm and impact and the the Im timing of the impact uh, is quite special. So I think in this case also, I mean, our visibility or uh, these exhibitions. They, they will have an impact, they might have had an impact, and uh, that will be seen in a different way. So I don't feel we're not visible. I, I, think, I think we are quite visible. Um, and uh, yesterday I had the honor, I must say, to introduce, uh, to be chair in a, a public lecture, maybe some of you have seen it, and I had to introduce Catherine Hess from Lausanne, and uh, it was, I was thinking, how am I going to put this in two minutes? You know, it was like, okay, as maybe as Sylvie says, it is one special case of, of mathematicians in any case. And uh, oops, something very important. We can hear a dog. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I don't want the battery to go. And uh, <clears throat> so, um, uh, 
but I saw that in her outreach, the first thing she put is the EPFL, the Lausanne Wish, uh, which is uh, women in, again for, uh, so I think even uh, very top women mathematician, uh, whether they are very top or not, it doesn't really matter. Every single woman uh, mathematician that I met does something for visibility by definition, uh, by presence, but also, uh, an effort, everyone makes an effort. So um, I always say the same story and, but uh, I never encountered, uh, I'm from Turkey and I always say it jokingly that I didn't know that we couldn't do mathematics until I went to the States, you know, for, for a PhD. <laughs> because no one told me in Turkey that I couldn't do mathematics. So it looks great, of course. Wow, what a country. On the other hand, we kill a woman a day. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, it's true. <laughs> I mean, violence, uh, one woman, who, and usually a woman who wants to uh, divorce is being killed. Oh, the average is one a day, I mean, in the last five years, which is something incredibly uh, <laughs> disturbing to say the least. So there is this schizophrenia, if you want, that uh, in, on one side, as a mathematician, I don't feel that I have a gender problem. On the other side, uh, there, is, there is this huge violence problem. So I'm a little bit always mixed in those problems. Uh, cut me, Sylvie, and uh, let's make a round and I can come back again. So Yes, okay, well, thank, thank you very much. much. I don't That's... want to be over time. Yes, we'll come back to you for uh, to the when we come to the discussion part. Thank you very much. So, Jushanka, would you like to say it? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think that one of the possible answers to your question, uh, how can we uh, make women uh, more visible, uh, is, is making such uh, exhibitions. So I, I, I would like to to congratulate you and Noel, and especially to uh, Slovenian uh, society of mathematician, physicists, astronomers, and Marietta and Jasna, who did a wonderful job. But you made me thinking, what does visible mean? And uh, some of the, of the answers, uh, yes, to be seen, to be heard, to be able to hear others, which means being part of a network, uh, which is thing which uh, ex which is think extremely important, and and some kind of infrastructure which allows you to 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 do mathematics. Uh, so my opinion is that that women are aware of gender bias, and that sometimes they intentionally choose invisibility just to let's say, limit exposure to that bias. And it's, it's wrong because it, it, uh, uh, when you are less visible, it could hurt your uh, odds to, to, to get promoted, uh, to be recognized. Uh, and uh, it's, it, it, is, it is very wrong. Uh, so the question uh, how, to, how to help women to be more visible uh, is let us try to, to fight against that implicit bias, uh, allow people to, to do mathematics and have, have a personal life, uh, which is uh, some, well, I think that, that, for example, mothers are more likely than other women to, to embrace that uh, intentional invisibility. Uh, you, you have sent us uh, a few questions more, so I'm trying to, to answer your question. Uh, so what was the impact of, of COVID-19 crisis to visibility of women in mathematics? So there are some good things about this crisis, some. Uh, I think that, that almost all of us mathematicians were uh, in position of, of, on, of, on invisible positions. So uh, many networks opened uh, to allow uh, their members to participate in some kind of interaction. 
uh, in the last uh, year, I've got uh, several males, males invited me and others, everybody, to join seminars on, on, on uh, uh, very nice places to see some uh, some lectures I would uh, not be able to see and participate. So uh, I think that people have recognized that it is important to to allow other peoples to join that networks. And yes, we, we have suffered quite a lot. Uh, many connections were lost. Uh, uh, just a few years ago, I, 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 I thought that my story in, in, this, uh, in this small book with the interviews uh, cannot uh, repeat in Europe. But nowadays you have people, so Marietta is one of them. So she was supposed to, to go for a year in Australia and it is just postponed and cancelled just because of the COVID. I thought it, it will be just one story many years ago, just for, for Balkan countries. So I think uh, uh, we should try to... Uh, to cherish this experience and try to to help to, to allow other people, so not just women in mathematics, but to many other mathematicians from other parts of the world to, to participate in those networks. That is also visibility to, to be part of a network. Uh, for me, it is the part. Uh, and uh, at the end, the, you send us the, the, the question, can you gain invisibility from behind your computer screen? Well, yes or no, I don't know. Yeah, I think uh, it can be done. Uh, it is good that we have those that infrastructure which allows us uh, to contact, otherwise the uh, whole school year would be lost and uh, contact with the with, with the colleagues would be impossible. That would be real catastrophe. But I also hope that we will return to normal life uh, and also remember that uh, that it is important to to step into the spotlight, uh, uh, even if you are a woman mathematician. And so let me thank you, all of you once again, and uh, Marietta and Jasna for this, uh, uh, this uh, additional chapter in that uh, marvelous book, uh, Mediterranean countries uh, uh, have, have its own chapter. Thank you all. Thank you, Jushanka. Thank you very much. Maybe it Agni would like to say. Yes. So thank you, uh, Sylvie and Noel, and uh, for the people who have mounted this exhibit in uh, at the uh, eight uh, ECM. I think it's a very, very successful endeavor. And as uh, we have seen how much this exhibit has traveled, not only in Europe, but all over the world. And I think it has been a great inspiration for, for many people. So in uh, to say my personal experience with it, we had it in Oslo in, I guess, four years ago uh, in the math library. And it was on the occasion of the Abel Prize events. And again, uh, whenever we do prizes in mathematics, it's great to have uh, to show visible women because unfortunately there are not that many women uh, who get all these prizes. And I would especially like to mention the very successful uh, exhibit when it was shown in Heidelberg for the Heidelberg Laureate Forum, because it's a big, and I mean, I should say that the organizers of the Heidelberg Laureate Forum have become very much aware of the need for women uh, vis visibility of women mathematicians, because unfortunately, again, most of the laureates, almost all of the laureates who participate in the Heidelberg Laureate Forum are male. And so for the young women who are there, they're trying really to get uh, like half of the young uh, mathematicians who, who get invited to the Heidelberg Laureate Forum are women. And it's, it's of course, a big lack of women uh, among the laureates. And so there are many old men and very few young women and uh, also very few old women to put it that way. So, so I think this has been uh, a very, very successful uh, thing. Um, 
it's the exhibit in Tromsø, which uh, so I thanks again for being invited to to join the exhibit and uh, with this. Uh, so it was Cordian Riner in Tromsø who wanted to have a Norwegian protagonist when he mounted the exhibit in Tromsø, and um, so this is probably the northernmost place the exhibit has been because Tromsø University of Tromsø is the northernmost university in the world. And uh, what I should uh, point out is that the exhibit actually now has is permanent in Tromsø. So they're not, it's not like they just had it for a week. Uh, we were there, there was an opening. Uh, the rector of the university, who's a woman who likes mathematics but was discouraged to study it, and instead she became a medical doctor. Uh, she was very pleased with the exhibit. And uh, it has now its permanent place in at the University of Tromsø, and it was also uh, showcased uh, in Gather Town at uh, a big international conference in Tromsø this month, the Mega Conference, Method uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and again the rector opened the the conference and mentioned in particular this exhibit. So this was really has been a big success in uh, in Tromsø and uh, I think that's uh, has made it very visible. And again that's another department with very few women uh, uh, mathematicians. So the fact that uh, this exhibit is there for the students to see I think it's uh, it's very good. So I'll I'll be brief because I think we're about to to end. So I will not Thank take you. more of your time. But thanks thanks again for all this. Thank you for being with us also, you, Ragni, Jusaka, and Bitu. Uh, I know it's not always easy uh, to be connected at a certain time. For <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah, you. I will have to leave at eight o'clock just to. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and uh, so I don't know whether we can ask the audience. I know you can all only answer uh, via the chat. But would you like to say something about visibility of women or audibility of women in maths, uh, maybe uh, in relation to your personal experience during the COVID crisis or independently of that? Would anyone like to say uh, something about this? I know it's not easy. <laughs> it's only per chat, but maybe someone would like to start. Well, are, are we discussing? Okay. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> I, think yes. I, I think I got cut off at some point, and so uh, I couldn't yes. hear Ragni's end. I, I, I was the only one. No, you never know whether you, it's you or the others. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but I'm yes. sorry. It's all right. Uh, it's, it's you know, yes. I, I feel like in the... I have a uh, maybe I'm not, I don't think very equal about women and men I guess so I think we are more aware just a little bit I mean maybe I I, I feel that we are more sensitive and more aware of the surrounding in general so if there is a catastrophe like the pandemic uh, we are more concerned I mean uh, you know so it's like we get dispersed more because we are more concerned so therefore we are more affected. Uh, but uh, at the beginning, I felt a little weird because I felt like it was said in some writings that some women are losing their positions in math departments because of then, then I mean, th this type of distortion always bothers me. And I feel like saying where, I mean, where there was cutoffs and especially women were uh, um, lost their jobs. So I don't know if there is such a special <laughs> treatment which happened. I think we just suffered more because we usually care more about our parents, our children and so on. And so therefore, and in this situation, it, it was a typical situation where many of us had to take care of parents or children or, or partners. Yes, uh, also because I think women are confronted directly with have to take care of the children, they have to take care of elderly people. Um, so there's a, a nice story that uh, used to be told in uh, the Soviet Union times in uh, Russia, well, in the Soviet Union, amongst women who are very active uh, in the Soviet Union as uh, you know, defending, well, 
trying to promote women. And uh, this, uh, the story is if you find a bag full of vegetable in a conference uh, with mass and vegetable, then it has to be the bag a woman left you know, at the time when you would queue up before the conference to get the vegetable because you know you knew you wouldn't get them if they would be gone after the conference. And so uh, I think we haven't evolved very much yet and we still are the ones who have vegetable in our satchels or in our uh, bags when we go to a conference. Um, so I think... Sylvie, I'm yes, sorry to, yes, yes, it's I'm sorry time, to interrupt, it? but I think it's time to go to the yes. other panel. So, yes. so thank uh, you to all. Thank you to the audience. Thank you to all the panelists. Thank you so much.